So I thought it would be fun to compare the Helco Work Vario 2000 Universal Axe, which is designed as a felling axe but can be used as a splitting maul, against my Grand First Brooks splitting maul. Now this splitting maul is the heavier maul with uh, the mallet on the end so that you can pound your wedges into place. I love this maul. My wife bought me this maul for Christmas and I absolutely <laughs> love this splitting maul. I did start out weighing these two mauls to see which head weighed the most. Um, now if you look at these, the, uh, the Universal Axe has a massive head on it, has bolts going into it. It's got a lot of metal up here. The Grand First Brooks actually outweighed it by a pound. So this came in at five pounds, about one and a half ounces. This came in at six pounds, one and a half ounces. So right there, I think that we've already got the Grand First Brooks outweighing the uh, Helco Works. And again, you know, the Helco Works axe is designed more, it was a felling axe design, but it's supposed to be universal so you can use it for splitting. So it's got a much narrower head. The Grand First Brooks has a real nice shape to that head to help split and tear the wood apart. So I'm curious to see how this universal concept is going to hold up, which is why I'm doing this video. Helco Works obviously has a longer handle. I really like the, the, the way that this Swedish splitting maul, you can see it's got a much shorter handle. It's got a heavier head. I like the control that I have with that. I love this uh, splitting maul. That said, Helco Work is also a very high quality axe. And uh, Holtzbrook is a high quality axe. You can buy from different companies. You don't have to buy you know, from Grand First Brooks. They're probably the, the, the premium most expensive, but arguably the Holtzbrook professional line is just as good as Grand First Brooks. And Helco work, I'm just getting into, I can't comment on everything that they have, but from what I've read, from what I've seen in reviews, from what I understand about the quality of their craftsmanship, it's a very good contender for those. Anyway, so both of these logs that I'm gonna be using here came from the same branch. I tried to make them approximately the same length. They might vary a little bit, but um, they're, they're from the same branch, about the same length, and about the same size. Then I'm gonna also be splitting today some other smaller logs of various sizes, um, various drawing times, but these were freshly cut, and I cut these specifically to try and compare these two uh, splitting malls right next to each other. So first up is my Grand First Brooks, my favorite splitting mall. Both of these axes I put a fresh fresh edge on this morning. So I'm pretty much working with as, as many equal opportunities as I can between these two axes. Oak is still pretty fresh looking in there. Starting to get a crack down his center line here. It's taken me 35 swings to get a split going. It's, it's actually running all the way across now. A few more swings ought to put this thing to rest. Give it one more for good riddance. Okay. I'm gonna have to count that. I think I was up to about 40 swings. The reason why I'm doing this on such a large, fresh piece of oak 
is to really get to understand the power of it. If I take a piece of oak that's been dried out and uh, sitting in our splitting pile, uh, you'll see how fast these plow through it. But this one did a fairly good job of splitting this open. Or actually, I might as well go ahead and split this up now. Oh, we can see how these do all the way down through the process. Oops. do with this. Moving on to the Helco Work Vario 2000 Universal Axe. See how this bad boy does. Whoa, it's hard to control.
Sorry, camera dipped down there a little bit. I'm gonna have to go back and count how many times I've hit this thing, I have no idea. I'm gonna go take a water break real quick and then come back and finish this one out. Again, I specifically chose logs that would be difficult to split, but man, this one is proving to be a challenge. That wasn't as clean as a split as I was hoping for. Let's see what we can do about this. Kind of soaked up a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I finished <laughs> chopping apart that wood, and it, it's pretty obvious to me that the best performing splitting mall between these two was the Grand First Brooks. Uh, much easier to split with. The, the design of this head is just phenomenal. When you get a good hit and it goes all the way through, the wood just flies right off of this thing. Um, both axes, well, that's still pretty sharp. Let me see how this one did. Yep, both axes held a, a beautiful edge throughout that entire process, which is pretty amazing to me. Uh, a cheap axe would not have held an edge through that oak the way that these two did. Um, now if you look at this, I did damage my handle slightly on the Helco work. Uh, the sleeve, the, the sleeve is about the same on both. It comes down a little lower on the Grand First Brooks, but the bit on this axe is much bigger. So if you miss, um, I mean, really that protection needs to come down here. It's not quite as, as long and wide as I would uh, like it to be. As far as I could tell, I did not split the handle in any way. Um, now, again, this isn't necessarily a fair comparison between brands because I was taking a universal axe and putting it up against a high-end splitting mall on, on oak that really wasn't that dry and was pretty hard. So, I mean, chances are um, th this one splits just fine. I did take it to uh, some drier pieces of wood and it did okay. It did about the same as my old splitting mall, maybe a little better than my old American splitting mall. Um, this Grand First Brooks one flew right through similar logs, uh, and that's what I'm, I'm pretty much used to that. Uh, I mean, this thing is just a beast. Now, the Helco Works brand does make a splitting mall that might compete with this one. I don't have that one to compare it to. The point of this video was to just to give it a shot and see, you know, if a universal axe could uh, hold up next to a splitting mall, and just to see how well the Helco Work axe did splitting. And I wouldn't mind using this splitting dried out wood. You know, it's it's definitely a decent axe. It's got a heavy head, uh, but it doesn't nearly as perform as well as an actual splitting mall and, and you know obviously this is a very nice splitting mall and it just pounded right through things so i mean this is this splitting mall here is really hard to beat my next test for this helco work will be to take down a tree and what i might do in comparison is actually use this axe up next to just a small forest axe to show uh, how much of a difference it makes to use a bigger axe like this. There is something odd about the weight of the head of this thing. And, I, and I've and i decided it's the design of, you know, having the bolts on here, you have less metal, met, less steel up around the shaft of this thing. So when you swing, it wants to turn and, and fall forward. It's, it's a little harder to control. That's harder to get used to. I think, you know, as you build your wrist muscles up, you'll get used to it. Some of you guys won't have a hard problem with that. Once you get those wrist muscles nice and strong, you should be able to control that head pretty good. But it is a pretty heavy, heavy head sticking off one side of your hickory handle, and this is an American hickory handle. So that weight distribution is a little hard to get used to uh, when you first start swinging this thing. Whereas with something like this, a lot of the weight is right here at the end of your handle. So it makes it a lot more even when you swing, a lot easier to control, you're coming right down on it. Um, and that's something that I really enjoy about some of these Grand First Brooks axes, is just the, the, the weight distribution of them. And the same thing with this uh, forest axe. A lot of the weight is right here on the handle. But like I said, I'm committed to trying to find other brands of, of uh, equal quality and 
Helco Work makes, uh, you know, similar axes. They have a similar line to these Grant First Brooks axes. It's called their traditional line. And I, I'd like to try that line. I, the Vario 2000 is something that has interested me just because the design is so fascinating and it looks like it would hold up really well. But like I said, the first thing that I came to with this design is that weight distribution up here. It's very different. It just wants to turn in your hand. And so when you're trying to come up and swing at a tree this way, you're fighting that weight coming down. Whereas if there was more weight of the, the head of this over the actual handle, you would have a little bit better distribution trying to swing that blade and aim that blade. I did have a little bit of trouble with that, just even splitting, bringing it straight down. Um, a little bit of trouble getting used to that feeling. Overall, I'm still relatively impressed with this axe. Like I said, it, it split better than my old splitting malls, uh, especially on some of that big old dried out oak. It it didn't you know necessarily do it as fast as I would have liked it to, but I also wasn't expecting that much out of it. You're dealing with a curved bit and a very narrow head. And that uh, that was another problem is this thing was just digging into those logs and, and getting stuck. Universal Axe is not a splitting maul. It is not a splitting axe. It is a felling axe that can be used as a splitting axe or splitting maul. And quite, quite clearly it can perform in that capacity, but not uh, to the extent of this. So this little demonstration here just kind of further confirms to me that you know, when you're doing work with your hands, um, you're better off buying an array of axes than depending on something that's designed universally like the Michigan Axe or this uh, Helco Work Universal Axe. And again, I haven't tried it felling yet. That's gonna be my next project. I found a tree that I'm ready to take down. Um, and so I'm gonna use this axe on that tree and I'm excited to try that out. I'm excited to see how much of a bite it can take out of it. I would suggest, you know, it's hard sometimes to swing an ax with gloves on, it, uh, but I would definitely suggest with this ax, having a glove on your bottom hand. For whatever reason, uh, it hurt me more with this ax than it did my Grand First Brooks. And that could be down here at the bottom of the Grand First Brooks the handles roughed up a bit and so maybe it was just giving me better grip and so it wasn't sliding in my hand this one would slide just a bit and then my hand would smash down on this down here um, it didn't feel as comfortable I think if I were wearing a glove at least on that back hand it would have made a big difference for me it's still a very beautiful axe I knew this one was gonna be the winner though.